Hello, welcome to the Pro Pilot Playbook, where we teach you tips and hacks to launch your aviation career. I'm Mike Martin. And I'm Sean Ritchie. Yeah, today we're uh, we're going to go over some uh, questions. You guys send out a lot of great questions. Um, I, first, I have a question for Sean. Why are you always at home and I'm always working? I mean, d- d- w- what's, the, what's the deal there? I, I tell you, you know, that is a good question. Uh, they're, they're, Somebody's got to keep the people flying, man. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Somebody's got to be out there working. To be honest with you, I have been working a lot. Uh, have you? Oh, good. Yeah. Uh, it's just, I mean, I mean, really, uh, you're right. That is a great question because there might be some viewers. <laughs> you know, if you're watching us on YouTube, you might be actually wondering that. But uh, the there actually is a good question. We would film a lot more of these if we were set up better. But since we're doing this Zoom thing, um, yeah, you know, I've you know that I've got the computer at home here to record it all and edit it oh, all, yeah, so mic. it's just easier to do it. Easier to do it this way is the actual real technical question, but. Yeah, he's he's uh, the technical uh, mastermind here behind the ProPilot playbook. So I just fall in his lead. I'm 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 uh, sitting in the Marriott with my earbuds in, and he's got the big fancy mic. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. yeah, I'm out actually in uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming, one of my favorite places in the whole world. Um, and we've been out here for several days, and it's rained almost every minute of every hour of every uh. second that I've been here. Um, it's starting to, I'm looking outside, starting to, to stop raining. I was, my plan was to go find a spot where I could have a dramatic view of the Grand Tetons behind me, but uh, well, you'll have to settle for this black and white uh, <laughs> picture here at, at Marriott. Right. Yeah. All but that I am really smoke, you got the smoke out there going on. Yeah. Too, right. Yeah. That's, that's that Dixie fire is uh, burning. And then there's another one that just erupted. That's, I mean, there's a number, I mean, there's a dozen or so fires out there, but I think the Dixie fire is one of the largest ones ever. Um, and then that, that smoke is all ran into here. So when we, we landed here, it wasn't raining. Uh, it was actually clear, uh, but the smoke was so bad. I think the visibility was three or four miles. We were on instruments all the way down. And typically when you land on the ramp, you have this dramatic view and, you know, uh, it's unbelievable. The, the, the airport's in a state park and it's probably the most photoed ramp photo ever. You know, everybody's taking sure. pictures of their plane with the mountains in the back and everything. Yeah. You can barely see the mountains with the smoke. And uh, you open the door and it smells like a barbecue restaurant, which if you're hungry is probably not bad. But uh, <laughs> so the rain came through. And uh, actually, I think it cleared out some of the smoke. So uh, this afternoon, it might be better. Uh, but yeah, that's an unfortunate thing. Later in the season, uh, here in the late summer, uh, all of the West Coast, you get those fires and it can be disruptive. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was out. I mean, even in even in Denver, uh, yeah, there was you know there's smoke everywhere. I mean, yeah, it's uh, it's crazy out there right now. Yeah, yeah. But for those of you that haven't been out here, now the word's out. It's it's super popular now, but it is really a spectacular place to come and visit. Oh, so, it, yeah, yeah. It's gorgeous out there. It's like everywhere you go, it's like a, a you're in a painting or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's it's right. Really neat. Oh cool. man. So so we got a great question. I think to start with, what what did, what do you got there, Sean? All right. So this comes from uh, Riley, and. Uh, Riley is, and I guess that could be a guy's name or a girl's name. So mm-hmm. we'll just play it safe here. My name is <laughs> Riley. I'll leave the last name out. Uh, I've graduated from Kansas State Polytechnic Flight School and I'm currently instructing there. I'm hoping to get an interview for a, with a corporate pilot for a corporate pilot position in my home state of Iowa. I have a captain there right now who is referring me for the job also. I was hoping to get some. So here's here comes the question. Yeah, that is a great, great opportunity. Uh, I was hoping to get some insight on technical questions that may come up in the interview, as well as some HR questions so I can knock it out of the park. Any help would be Uh appreciated. Love the podcast. Hope all is well. Riley. Riley, that's a great question there. And, And I think a lot of viewers could get some value from that. Um, The problem is, I'll go ahead and start, Sean. The problem is with these corporate interviews, and I've done a lot of them and I've conducted a lot of them, is, you know, when you go for an airline interview, there's all these gouges on the internet and they have these canned questions that they have to ask. And you can be ultra prepared for those because you can see what they asked the last guy. They're probably going to ask you that. 
and you can just knock it out of the park. Well, there's there's not stuff. even really any probably. I mean, there's very little variance from what yeah. you're reading on those on those gouges for the airline interviews. I mean, they have to maintain right. that that line. They can't, you know, make one interview incredibly difficult compared to the last interview. Um, they got to they got to be careful with that stuff. Yeah, yeah. In corporate, obviously, they have the HR guidelines that any company has and the questions they can ask and all that stuff. But but really, it's just a small thing. They're only instead of, you know, airlines are inter interviewing literally thousands of pilots. A corporate operation might not interview five, four or something. Um, so there's not a big standardization on what they're going to ask you and how they're going to go. Um, but I can give you some general pointers just in my experience from interviewing people and then also being interviewed in the corporate department. Um, the, 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 the most critical thing I would say is um, they already know based on your resume and your experience, and everything that you can fly. You've passed all the check rides. You've got all the ratings. You're qualified for the job. You know, if you've got these hours that they want, all that stuff. What they're looking for in an interview is uh, is this somebody I want to spend time with on the road? You know, um, how's their personality? Um, um, how are they uh, going to interact with the other people that work here? And importantly, too, is how are they going to carry themselves around the passengers? Um, um, you know, um, uh, so you, you want to come across, uh, I would say, as, as someone that's easy to get along with, easy to travel with, um, and also can communicate well with high net worth people, um, you, you know, and you know what to say and when to say. Um, and, but, you know, also be technically competent, um, and appear confident, but then don't appear arrogant because nobody wants to work with, uh, somebody that's, you know, thinks they're God's gift aviation. <laughs> I'm sure you've flown with those guys. Right. John? Right. Oh yeah. So that would yeah. be my brief answer. If I could just, uh, tell you anything is that it's such yeah. a, it's such a hard question to answer. It's so broad because you right. could be, you know, without, without you filling in the details of what kind of corporate flight department we're talking about here. Is this, is this right. somebody that's, they got four or five airplanes and several pilots and they have a process in place, or is this an owner that has one airplane? And, you know, I've flown, I've been to corporate interviews before where they were very organized and it was, you know, darn near, a, you know, they knew what they were doing. And then right. I've flown for several corporate, and this is more likely the case, you know, the guy that owns one, maybe two airplanes, and you're there because one of the pilots that already flies for this individual recommended you, and they know that they can, like Mike just said, be good with a four-day trip with you on the road, and you won't be trying to kill each other. Um, right. You got stuff in common. You know, you're both into the same thing and, uh, you know, you'll get along on the road. So you present, you're presented to the boss or the principal, we call them. Uh, hey, I got a guy, you know, that I really think he'd be good for the job and check him out. And then your interview consists of meeting the boss. Um, and these guys, you know, these guys worth, you know, multi millions of dollars. They're usually a pretty good read of somebody's character. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, and there might be a little bit of an HR thing in there. Uh, you know, the HR people get involved, you know, one of that at work for one of the companies, the principal owns or something, and they might have right. you, do a, you know, one of these, uh, you know, psych, psych test on the internet or something or whatever. But right. it's, it's so, it's so all over the board. Your, your interview may consist of going to lunch with the owner. Um, you know, there may not be any technical aspects of it. If it's a larger flight department, yeah. I mean, I would say some of the go-to things uh, to answer your technical questions. There, you know, I think one of the things that most pilots who don't give interviews all day long, every day, like at an airline, you know, they may hand you an approach plate and ask you to, what's this mean? Or, what do you suppose <laughs> this is? Yep. You know, what's the lowest you could go down on this approach? Or they may give you scenario-based things. Um, well, you're on your way into an airport and there's a, uh, you know, that airport's closed. Now, what are you going right. to do? You know, that kind of thing. But chances are, if this, if this individual is recommending you, that's not even going to be a, a, a situation. Uh, it it right. always goes back to, you know, the answer in those scenario based questions, nine out of 10 times, the answer to those questions is, uh, get other people involved in the problem. Talk to the guy sitting next to you in the cockpit. If you can get company on the on the you know 
talk to the passengers where they want to go, you know, in the corporate environment, you talk to the passengers. But uh, so I wouldn't, but your best resource, no matter what, the actual answer to your question is you need to talk to the person who's recommending you. Right. The insider. Yeah. You need to beat these people down for, for what the interview is like. What's the process going to be like? Is there even going to be an interview? Or are we just going to go out to lunch? You know, I mean, how, how's it going to go? Because right. it's in their best. And you might want to remind them if they're actually recommending you, it's in their best interest for you to not hose this up as well, because it's going to look bad on them. So right. even for some reason, they don't know the answer to what the interview is going to be uh involved you know what's involved in the interview they need to go figure it out so they can get back to you because it's in their yeah. best interest too right no i agree with that completely yeah uh tr try to figure out you know what was their interview like because they obviously worked there when they were hired there and get any heads up another thing too don't get wrapped around the axle about aircraft specific questions right uh, because yeah that's kind of a misconception that i thought when i first started interviewing for these kind of jobs is Oh, are they going to ask me a bunch of questions about the planes they fly? Well, they realize that they they've been trained on those and you haven't. So you usually the interviewer hasn't flown what you're flying, and then they also uh, know that you haven't flown what they're flying. So, like Sean said, they're going to ask you general, maybe airspace or technical uh, judgment questions, but not not anything specific to their plane. So I wouldn't research that. And of course, the old ad is a huge thing: is research the company, whoever the parent company is that owns the aircraft. I would know everything about them, what they're doing, what kind of deals they're doing, where they're going. Just read all of that, um, and then if you can think of some questions. Uh, to ask them because they're always going to ask you, do you have any questions? You could ask specific questions about, um, oh, I saw your office is here. Is there any expansion? You know, just to show that you've done your homework on the company. Yeah, never do not have a question, you know, waiting in the wings to throw it there. Right. The, right. That, if you're in an interview and they ask you, so do you have any questions for us? And you say, no, 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 I'm good. Yeah, you're probably yeah. not. That's such a huge red flag and negative to the interviewer. Yeah, that's a yeah. It always has something geared up to ask them, whether it's right. something to do with you know the airplane or you know the company, the future of the company, whatever that kind of thing. But yeah, as far as technical stuff, I would be surprised. You know, most corporate interviews I've been on, there's never been a technical question. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, I think you'll be in good shape. And uh, yeah, just find out all the information you can before that to be prepared. And, uh, you know, getting the interview is is your 80% there probably in the corporate world. Oh, absolutely. Right. Yep, yep. Yep, just don't come across arrogant. Don't use any profanity. You know, don't don't uh, uh, complain about your current job. That's another bad one because they're like, oh, yep. this person's a complainer, you know. So absolutely. Yeah. Ho hopefully that... Uh, that works out well. And, you know, any general interview prep, uh, not aviation related that you can find online, I think would uh, be very helpful. Yeah. There's oodles of that stuff everywhere. You can just Google right. it and there's YouTube videos out there. Um, you know, where you're driving in your car, you can watch YouTube videos on how to interview and, you know, everything from eye contact to how to shake somebody's hand to, you know, the general, general questions. If you do end up in an HR, you know, situation, uh, you know, there's always those half dozen, dozen questions that every HR department on the planet asks a person, you know, you can get the, you know, how to answer those on the internet real easy. Uh, yep. Riley, one thing to remember though, do, if for some reason this doesn't shake out, um, you know, cause Mike and I have done a, a similar podcast on this before about how the hiring works in a corporate department, you know, right. and typically, especially if this is a small corporate department. You know, when when there's an outage, when there's a an open seat, it is a the house is on fire. I mean, that yeah. thing needs to be filled quickly. And, uh, you know, if this doesn't work out for some reason, do not get discouraged because there are plenty of jobs out there and yep. there'll be there'll be something else for sure. Absolutely. It'll be a good experience. And, you know, uh, oftentimes people will interview for a small operation like that, not get the job they pick somebody else 
then later that that pilot doesn't work out or moves on and then they're calling back like oh we should have you know we really should have hired sean you know so uh yeah it's it's just a positive thing all around that you got the interview yes yeah all right great great question riley yeah thank you for the question if you have a question for us you'd like us to answer you can email us at podcast at propilotplaybook.com and we'll see you next week with another one Thanks for watching.